Good evening. Tonight we're going to be doing it in two material and inventory controls. We're going to be looking at inventory. Uh, what we need to do is define the different categories of inventory and we need to be able to apply the perpetual and the periodic inventory system which we did in the first semester. We're going to be focusing more on the periodic inventory system this semester because we're going to be looking at work in progress. So in the first semester we looked only at the purchase and sale of finished goods in relation to calculating the cost of sales and doing the perpetual and the, in, and, and the periodic system. Now we are looking at work in progress, raw materials, work in progress and finished goods. So to do that, we use the periodic system more than the perpetual system. So we're going to be looking at that today. We're going to be looking at calculating the inventory issued to production, the raw materials issued to production, using the FIFO method, the first in, first out method, as well as using the weighted average method, because both methods are used. Why is this important? Because once again, the costing of inventory is important from a marketing and retail point of view because you have to know how much you can sell it at and whether it's a marketable product or not based on the cost. Okay, then we're going to be looking a little bit at just in time as well. So we're going to be doing two examples using FIFO and two examples using weighted average. Um, and so we must make sure that we that we keep up to date, we all understand it. Okay. So in looking at the costing terminology, we've got direct materials and we've got direct labor and these are the price costs, we did this last week. And then we've got the manufacturing overhead, so the combination of the direct labor, this is what we use, we use the labor and the overheads to convert the direct materials to finished goods. So this is the costing terminology we're going to be using, right? So what we're going to be looking at today is the direct materials, okay, in relation to the costing. Well, we're going to be looking at the others as well. So now we find out that when it comes to a manufacturing entity, an entity that is making, our entity today is making denim handbags. We have raw materials. The raw materials get issued to production to become work in progress. When the work in progress is completed, it becomes the finished goods. So can you see that the raw materials, before they're issued to production are raw materials, but they're still going to be included in the cost of inventory. Once they've been issued to production, they become part of the work in progress, but they're not finished yet, they're still work in progress, but they still have to be costed into the cost of inventory. When we want to calculate the closing balance in a manufacturing entity, we need to look at the raw materials plus the work in progress plus the finished goods. So this is a little diagram that I did for you, which you've got on the top of your handout, on the top left-hand corner of your handout. So with raw materials, we look at the opening balance plus what we purchased minus what we've issued to production. This raw material that has been issued to production becomes part of the raw material for work in progress. In order to convert the raw material to a completed item, we have to add direct labor and we have to add manufacturing overhead, but from the previous period, we still have some opening balance. So we have to subtract what we've completed because that becomes part of our finished goods. And at the end of the period, any period, we will have a closing balance of raw materials and a closing balance of work in progress as well as a closing balance of finished goods. And to calculate inventory, we have to add all three of these together. Okay, so the perpetual inventory system we did a lot on. in the first semester, where every time you record the sale, you record the cost of sale. But now we're looking at work in progress. If the raw material is going to a different section of the factory to work in progress, and then the work in progress is going to finish work, but it's not necessarily being sold to an outsider. 
so the respectful system is less appropriate. Also, when you're dealing with something like raw materials, you've got a lot of similar material around, okay? So the periodic system is more appropriate to use in a manufacturing environment. So we're going to be doing, looking more at the periodic system today, okay? So we know, you remember how we did the periodic system? We looked at the opening balance plus the purchases plus any other cost minus the closing balance to calculate the cost of sales. We're going to use the same thing here, okay? So the raw materials and the work in progress are always on a periodic system. I suppose perhaps it's possible to move with these days with automation that is more automated and people, uh, big manufacturing companies perhaps they be moving away from the periodic system. If I think of, for example, a Mitsubishi manufacturing plant, maybe they are using a periodic system for their raw materials and work in progress. But anyway, the important thing for us is to know how we've costed the inventory because from a marketing and a retail point of view, we need to know the cost of the inventory and we need to know how that cost was arrived at so that the management can't just say to you, well, the cost is 57 grand and you can only sell it for 60, it's not a viable product. Then you go and you unpack the cost and you can see if they're actually trying to what do we need? Okay. So <clears throat> that's how that works, okay? So we take our opening balance plus purchases plus the cost for conversion now because we are converting the raw material into finished goods. So we need to have the direct labor and the manufacturing overhead. So they're going to be added in at this point here, right? So we're going to use that as the raw materials issued to production, as well as the work in progress that's issued to finished goods. So once it's finished goods, then it's available for sale, but up until that point, it's part of work in progress. So we use two different methods to do that. The first is the FIFO method, which we're going to practice first. And the second one is the weighted average method. Now the reason why this lecture is particularly difficult is because I'm teaching you two different methods. So you've no sooner learned what the FIFO method is and we're going to have to jump to the weighted average method. But we don't have an opportunity to have two separate lectures. So I'll have to do them both in this lecture. So we have to make sure, before we move from FIFO to weighted average, that everybody understands FIFO. Then we'll say, right now, we maybe we need to have a quick break, and then we'll do the weighted average. Okay, but we need to understand both by the end of today and not get them confused. We've got to be able to treat them completely separately, FIFO and weighted average. Okay, this last thing first up, it, it's illegal, we don't use it anymore, um, but it is, it's illegal to use in financial accounting, but it's sometimes used in cost accounting, but we ignore it, we do FIFO and we do weighted average. Okay, so FIFO is exactly what it sounds like. The inventory you bought first, the raw materials you bought first, and then the raw materials you're going to issue to production first. So whatever came in first, going to go into your work in progress first so that your old stock gets cleared out before your new stock gets used that makes sense okay and then <clears throat> often we have identical materials if you think of, of nuts and bolts and screws and things okay so it's more difficult to see which are the old ones which are the new ones but insofar as possible with FIFO we take the ones that we bought first and we issue them to production to be part of work in progress first. Okay, we're going to start straight away with a lecture example, right? So we're going to calculate the clothing uh, inventory and we're using FIFO. So we have to look at what we bought first and what we bought next, right? So this example is your example one on the top of your hand now. So each handbag needs three of these 50 centimeter slips. Our opening balance on the 1st of January is 140 slips, which were purchased at one rand each. 
And during January, we issued enough zips to production to make 30 bags. So each bag needs three zips. So that's going to be how many bags? How many zips? Each, every bag needs three zips, and we issued, issued to production to make 30 bags. It's going to be 90 zips. Do you agree? Okay. So we're looking at January, and then we're looking at February. On the 1st of February, we bought another 100 zips. And during February, we issued enough zips to production to make another 40 bags. In other words, how many? How many zips? 120 zips. Okay. So what we want to do is calculate the closing value of the zips at the end of February. So if you look on the back here, if you flip over, I've given you a little template. And this is the template that we're going to use. I want you to burn it into your memory because this we use the same template for weighted average and for FIFO, which is another reason why people get confused. And if you get the two confused, then you're never going to get the right answer. Okay, so we have to keep FIFO and weighted average separate, but we're using the same template. Okay. On this side is your balance, so you're always going to calculate your balance. On the your left hand side is the new inventory that you're receiving when you purchase new inventory. Okay? When you return inventory to a supplier, it's going to go into this section as a minus. And the middle section is the inventory you have issued to production. So we're going to start by putting our opening balance of 140 zips at one rand each under balance in the first row. Okay? So this is the picture so far. We started with 140 zips at, 100, at one rand each. During January, we issued 90 zips to production. On the 1st of February, we received another 100 zips at 1 rand 10. And then on the 28th of February, we issued another 120 zips to production. So of this 140 zips, at the end of January, can you see that we had 50 left? Because we started with 140 and we issued 90 to production. So we have 50 left at this point. Now when we issue the 120, we must first issue the 50 at 1 rand before we issue 70 at 1 rand 10. Okay, I'm going to go over this again to give you the picture. If you understand it, you can start working. But please do it. Because you should be the And then I'll it from the hand. So the first thing you're going to do is put your balance, your opening balance in the balance column. 140 zips at one rand is 140 rand. Then you issued 90 zips to production because you had 30 bags, three zips each. All of these zips were at one rand because that's what you had here. Gave you 90 rand. Your balance was 50 zips at one rand gave you 50 rand. These are on your link already. Then the next thing you did was you bought another 100 zips, okay? So now you have 50 zips at 1 rand and 100 zips at 1 rand 10. So if you were to take your closing balance of inventory at this point, it would be 160 rand. But you issued another 120 zips to production during February, okay? So the 120 must be based on FIFO. So the first 50 must be at 1 rand. And the other 70 must be at 1 rand 10, gives you 77 rand. Because you had 100 at 1 rand 10, you have 30 zips left at 1 rand 10, gives you a closing balance of 33 rand. So your closing balance of inventory is going to be 33 rand. And your inventory issued to production is going to be 90 plus 50 is 140 plus 77 is 237. Got it? No. Oh. 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 Oh.
here in February, we have to issue the old zips first. So this 120 we have to break up into, how many did we have of the old stock? 50 at one rand. That means we've now used up the old stock. The five is gone, okay? So therefore, we have to issue another 70 because we have to issue a total of 120. 40 bags, 3 zips, 120 zips in total. These zips have to be issued at 1 rand 10, which gives us 77 rand. It means that if we had 100 and we issued 70 of the 100, we've got 13 zips left at 1 rand 10 is 33 rand. Louder, I can't hear. Don't talk. No. You know how I do it? If the answer's right, it's right. But it helps to do FIFO like this. Okay? Personally, I don't do FIFO like this. I do it the shortcut way. Yeah. As long as you don't get lost in your shortcut. Okay. But I've just laid it out like this because, do you remember Mr. Reed? Yes. This is how he used to do it, you know? So I was like, okay, well, this works. Did you just come down? That's my last one. But there are some others floating around. We can ask you this way. There are another three. Okay, are we happy with this? Everyone got the idea? This one is a lot more difficult than the first one. Okay? We've got two different types of zips. We've got a 20 centimeter zip and a 50 centimeter zip. You're going to do them separately. We're going to do the 50 centimeter zips first. And so, in fact, it's two lecture examples in one. Okay? We're still doing FIFO. Each Zara handbag needs one 50 centimeter zip and two 20 centimeter zips. So now you need to separate the information. If you had two different color highlighters, you're going to make the one green and the other yellow or whatever. Okay, so everything to do with the 50 centimeter zips, you're going to put a line under, and everything to do with the 20 centimeter zips, you're going to put a circle around or a star or something, okay, to separate them. So now I'm just going to talk through it from top to bottom, but only focusing on the 50 centimeter zips, right? So each handbag uses one 50 centimeter zip. We had 60 50 centimeter zips in stock at one rand 10 each. Okay, so 66 rand, right? Um, during January, we issued 40 zips to production because it's one bag, one zip. And in February, we bought another 30 50 centimeter zips at one rand 30. The return doesn't relate to the 50 centimeter zips. And then in February, we issued another 40 50 centimeter zips to production. So this is the picture in relation to the 50 centimeter zips. We started with 60 zips, we issued 40 to production. It means at this point we will have 20 zips left at 1 rand 10, 22 rand. 
Then we bought another 30. At this point, we've got a total of 50 zips in stock, 20 of them at 1 rand 10 and 30 of them at 1 rand 30. When we issue 40 zips to production, we must issue the old 20 first, and we're issuing 40 in total. Therefore, the next 20 must come out of these. Therefore, we're going to have 10 left at 1 rand 30. But I want you to use your framework that I've given you to do that for the 50 centimeter zips. If you get it finished and done, you can start with the 20 centimeter zips. But once you've done the, all done the 50 centimeter zips, we're gonna go over it together. So you had 50 in total. So when you issued your 20, your 40, you had 10 less. Okay. So now, okay, everyone will write with this. Now I'm gonna tell you my shortcut for FIFO. Okay, so you go, the shortcut is to go backwards to calculate the closing balance, okay? So look, I say I started with 60, I issued 40, means I've got 20 left. I bought another 30, that means I've got 50 in total. I issued 20, 40 to production, that means I've got 10 left. That must mean I've got 10 left at the last price, which is 1 rand 30, it gives me 13 rand. Okay, I had 60 to start with, okay? So I'm not doing a calculation, 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 calculation. I'm doing one calculation. I had 60, I issued 40, I've got 20 left, yes. Right? I bought another 30. I've got 50 in total. I issued 20, 40 to production. It means I've got 10 left. If it's FIFO, the 10 that I've got left must be at the last price I bought them at. 1 rand 30. It gives me 13 rand. So I can calculate the closing balance in one minute. So man, can you do the quick way? Yes, but what happens? Okay, so can you do the quick way in the test? Yes, but the answer is, in the test, you will almost always, any question will ask you the closing balance as well as the value of the inventory issued to production. So you're gonna have to calculate the 44 plus the 22 plus the 26 to give you the value of inventory issued to production. So when I ask for the value of inventory issued to production, I want the total of this column here. When I ask for the closing balance of inventory, it's just this number here. Okay, so let's do the 20 centimeter zips now. Right, these are the 20 centimeter zips, and each bag uses two 20 centimeter zips. No, 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 this is the number of units you've got. It's only when you're issuing two productions, you're issuing to make 40 bags, you must issue 80 zips. This is the actual number of them. The return to supplier must go under receive as a minus because it hasn't been issued to production. If you put it under issued, you're going to have the wrong amount issued to production, the wrong brand value issued to production. Okay, can we go through the 50, the 20 centimeter zip example? Okay, this is the last FIFO example. So you have to get it. You have to understand how FIFO works at the end of this one. Okay, fine. So we started with 160, but we said the 100 were older than the 60, although they were all part of the opening balance. Okay. Then we issued 80 to production, which means we had 20 at 60 cents left and the full 60 at 68 cents left. Then we bought another 50 at 70 cents. So at this point, we've got 20 at 60 cents, 60 at 65 cents, and 50 at 70 cents, right? Mm -hmm. So that's going to be our total, right? Then we return but when we return the goods 
we have to not put them in the issue because they didn't go to production. They went back to the supplier. So this is received from supplier and returned to the supplier. So we put it in there as a minus. But it's not, now we're not applying FIFO. We know exactly which zips we, took, we sent back. They were the zips that we got for 70 cents. So we must put in the exact price that we got them at. It won't necessarily say that we returned 10 zips at 70 cents. It will say we returned 10 of the zips we bought on the 10th of February. So you must know that those are going to be returned at the price you bought them at in February, which is 70 cents. So now we've got the 20 still, the 60 still, but now we've got 40 at 70 cents, right? Now we issue 80 to production. Isn't that nice and neat? So the 20 at 60 cents are gone, the 60 at 68 cents are gone, and the balance that we've got left must be the 40 at 70 cents gives us 28 rand. Did you get 28 rand, Ryan? Yes. So quite a few of you did get 28 rand. Yes. Fantastic. Okay, so the short way is I had 160, I used 80, I've got 60 left. I bought another 50, I've got 110. I sent 10 back, I've got 100. I issued 80, I've got... Nope, yes. 160 minus 80 is 80. Plus 50 is 130. Minus 10 is 120. Minus 80 is 40. And it must be... 40 at 70 cents because that's the last price we had them at. 40 times 70 is 28 rand. Okay, yes? If you've got two different items in one question, do the items separately, please. Do not get them mixed up. So number one, if you've got more than one item, you do it separately. Number two, you rearrange the information into date sequence. In these examples, you've been given them in date sequence. In your tutorials, they are not given in date sequence. You're given first how much you bought and when you bought it, and then what you used and when you used it. You must get it in date sequence. Okay. So, that's FIFO. Are we okay with FIFO? Okay, you've got lots of, you've got four tutorials. Three of them use FIFO, I think, or two of them use FIFO. Please do the tutorials, the solutions are there already. And you've got a Yuli quiz. 13 rand for the one, 28 rand for the other, is 41 rand in total. Right. Now we're going to look at the weighted average and how to use the weighted average. With the weighted average, you are working with an average price. So at the beginning of every period, you've got an average price for your inventory on hand. So you won't have a situation where you've got 100 at 1 rand and 60 at 1 rand 10. They're all going to be 160 at 1 rand whatever. Okay, because we've calculated the average price and I'm going to show you how to calculate the average price, okay? So, if you think of it now, when you issue inventory to production, it's not going to affect the price because the price will be what the price is and that's the price you're issuing it to production, okay? But when you get new inventory in, if it's at a different price from your average, then that's going to affect your average and you have to recalculate it. So if you're looking at your handout here, every time you receive new inventory, you calculate a new weighted average. When you issue inventory to production, you do it at the average price. So that doesn't affect the weighted average price. But when new goods come in, you may have some goods at 34 Rand and the new goods come in at 40 Rand, you've got to calculate a new weighted average price. When you're issuing it to production, you're going to issue it at 34 Rand. But when the new goods come in at 40 Rand, you've got two different sets of prices. So whenever you've got two different prices, you've got to recalculate your weighted average. Okay, so it works on an average price. Uh, and the other time that you will have a difference is when you return goods to the supplier. 
So every time that received or returned column is affected, you have to recalculate your average. Why do you have to recalculate the average if you return the goods to the supplier? Because you're returning them at the price you got them at, not at the weighted average. Okay, when we do the example, you will see, but bear in mind what I'm saying. When you issue to production, you don't have to recalculate the, the average, but when you buy new goods or return goods to the supplier, you have to recalculate the average price. Okay, how do we calculate the average price? We take the total cost of all the units we've got in stock, divided by the total number of units we've got in stock. How do we calculate the total cost? We have to calculate the cost for the one price and then the cost for the other price. So we first have to calculate the 100 zips at 60 cents, gives us 60 rand, and then we have to calculate the 60 zips at 68 cents. We add those two amounts together and if we divide by the total number of zips, what is the total? We had 100 plus 60 is 160 zips. So we get an average of 0.675. We don't round up unless it's 20 different things, okay? So this is 67 and a half cents. So we would normally go to the third decimal place. Why? Because when we're issuing things like nuts and bolts and things, we can be issuing thousands of them at a time so the third decimal place actually makes quite a difference in the end so we go to three decimal places for the individual price okay so we do that when we purchase new inventory and when we return inventory to the supplier so even if your opening balance they tell you you've got so many at this that you bought at this price and so many that you bought at this price then even for your opening balance you must calculate your average price okay so the best way to do it is to do an example which is what we're going to do now right so we're going to do ziggy backpacks now and they need one cent 150 centimeter zip and we use weighted average okay so on the, at the beginning of March, we had 650 centimeter zips, which we purchased for 150. We didn't have any other stock, so the six, the 150 is effectively our weighted <coughs> average price because that's all we've got in stock. Okay. So we issued to production enough zips for 340 bags. It's one zip a bag, so 340 zips. Okay. Right, on the 10th of March, we bought another 240 50 centimeter zips, right? On the 20th of March, we returned 100 of the zips to the supplier. But now you see, this, this information is not being given to you in day sequence. So I'll show you why now. So we bought another 240 on the 10th of March, and on the 20th of March, we returned 100 to the supplier. But it's 100 that we purchased at 1.65. And now, this, so I've given you the total 340 bags, okay? But it was 120 prior to the new, the first purchase, and then 120 prior to returning the goods to the supplier, and then 100 after the 20th. So can you see here that you've got to organize it in day sequence? This is issued to production, okay? Hopefully on the next slide, I've pulled it all together. Yes, I have. Okay, you start with 600 zips. Can you see now I've put it in date sequence for you? You must put it in date sequence first. You started with 600 zips. You issued 120 to production. These 120 are going to be at 150. Do you agree? Yes. Then you bought another 240 at 1965. Receive, you must recalculate. How are you going to calculate your weighted average at this point here? You're going to say 420, 480 at 1950 plus 240 at 1965. You're going to add those together and it's going to be divided by 400, 4, 5, 6, 7, 20. Divided by 720. Okay, 
So at this point, you're going to recalculate your weighted average. And at this point, where you return goods to the supplier, you're going to recalculate your weighted average. Now, the good news about the weighted average is for every one of these, it's one line. One line, one line, one line, one line, one line, one line. So you can do the whole thing in six lines because you're calculating your weighted average. Okay? So the thing is that we the balance. Yeah. But then how? As white at what price? And look, I give the total cost of. So you can number each time one rand Okay. So here we had 600 at one rand fifty. We issued 120 to production, means we had 480 left at one rand fifty. Gave us 720 rand. This is the rand value of the stock, the cost of the stock that we've got before we bought the new 240 zips. Then we bought 240 zips at one rand sixty-five. Some of you have written down one rand fifty-five. Is it 165 is correct? Yes. Okay, gave you 396 Rand. Now, the total cost, look at this, how do you calculate the weighted average? Total cost divided by number of units. Okay, so here, your total cost must be 720 Rand plus 396 Rand. So the first thing you have to do here is calculate this figure here. 1,116 Rand. That's your total cost. Your total number of units is 480 plus 240 is 720. So you've got 720 units and the total cost is 1,116 Rand. Now your average price must be 1116 Rand divided by 720 gives you 1 Rand 55. And then you do your issue to production at 1 Rand 55 and your return and calculate your closing balance. So this was before you returned the thing to the thing. So we're going to use this 600 and that and the 100 is yeah. So we're going to add this and that and then we're going to add that and then we're Put it in date order. One line for everything that happens, for every action, for every transaction, it's one line. And you recalculate the weighted average when you purchase new inventory and when you return inventory to the supplier. So this one we already know is going to be 900 Rand and the 120 that are going to be issued are going to be issued at 1 Rand 50, the first 120. That's going to leave 480 at 1 Rand 50. Then when we buy the next 240 at 1 Rand 65, we have to recalculate the weighted average. We take the average cost, the total cost, 720 plus 396, the total cost, 1116, divided by the total number of units, 480 plus 240, 720. 1116 divided by 720 units is 1 rand 55. The next units, the 120 that are issued next, are issued at that price, 1 rand 55. When you issued, it doesn't change the price, it changes the number. So now we don't have 720 units left, we've got 600 units left at 1 rand 55. We must calculate this total because we need to work out our new weighted average at this point here. Then we return 100 to the supplier. This is a minus here. So when we calculate the total cost of the goods we've got left here, it must be 930 Rand minus 165. Do you agree? Mm. Because those goods went back to the supplier. Therefore, the total cost of the goods we have in stock on the 20th of March is 765 Rand. 
How many do we have? We had 600. We returned 100 to the supplier. We've got 500 left. So total cost divided by total number of units, 765 divided by 500 gives you 1 rand 53. Now, the 100 are issued at 1 rand 53 gives you 153 rand, means you've got 400 left at 1 rand 53, your closing balance is 612 rand. Did anyone get right the way to the bottom? Yes. Great. Question. Oh, you got it. Fantastic. Okay, so can you see here that you're also given the information separately? Here you had a thousand zips, you bought another 400, you bought another 400. You're given the dates, okay? So when you buy each of these, your weighted average is going to change. But you also issued them to production like this, okay? So we're using two zips per bag. So 400 first, and then 200, and then 200. So you must put it in date sequence, right? So first the purchase, then the, first the opening balance, then 400 issued to production, then 400 bought, then 200 issued to production, then 400 bought, another 400 at a different price, and then the last 200 issued to production. So I've done it for you, but this is what you have to do for yourself. Okay, so from this, or from the question, you're going to use the template that I've given you and calculate the closing balance. Remember, I'm going to ask two things. I'm going to ask the closing balance and the total RAND value of the goods issued to production. So you've got 600 left at 90 cents, gives you 540 RAND. You bought another 400 units at 1 RAND, is a total of 400 RAND. So now, because you received units, you bought units, you have to recalculate your average price. Your total cost is 400 plus 540 is 940. Your total units is 600 plus 400 is 1,000. Must be your average price is 940 rand divided by 1,000 is 94 cents a unit. Then you issued some more to production at 94 cents, 200. So you've got 800 left at 94 cents gives you 752. Then you bought another 400 at 1 rand 50, gave you 460 rand. Now because you've bought more, you've got to recalculate your average cost. So your total RAND value, your total cost must be 752 plus 460 gives you 1012 RAND. Your total number of units is 800 plus 400 is 1200. Your average price here is 1,212 rand divided by 1,200 is one rand and one cent per unit. Then you issue 200 to production at one rand and one cent gives you 202 rand and you've got a thousand units left at one rand and one cent gives you 1,010 rand. So your closing balance of inventory is 1,010 rand the total RAND value of inventory issued to production is 360 plus 188 plus 202. Does that make sense? Okay. Don't think that you can start with FIFO and move. No. You're doing FIFO or you're doing weighted average. Don't get the two confused. 